We begin tonight with a window into the soul of America's modern conservative movement. Just a little high five there at the very end. Woo. It's a very nice touch. Uh, that Hooray the U.S. Lost video was shot at a conference of the conservative group Americans for Prosperity. And if today's news is any indication, American conservatives are going to be wearing this video like an albatross for a very, very long time. Mr. President, this was really hard to comprehend. comprehend. The same minority who happily pumped one fist when... Chicago, when America lost its bid to host the Olympics, they were cheering. We saw it on television because we lost the Olympics. But they shake the other fist at those it slanders as unpatriotic. They were cheering. We saw it on television. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid speaking on the floor of the Senate today. Although any number of conservatives were caught online expressing their glee at the United States losing its bid for the Olympics, it was this Americans for Prosperity group that was caught on tape, quite literally cheering and slapping high fives when they heard the news that America had lost. Now, you might remember Americans for Prosperity from their recent efforts to fight health reform. They're the people who've been driving around the country in big buses with a bloody red handprint on the side. And the buses say, hands off my health care. Now, they say their mission is, quote, educating citizens about health reform. Education that apparently consists of promoting speakers like this guy. If this new Obamacare program comes to fruition, when you reach 65 and every five years thereafter, you're going to have to have a counseling session with some... Um, some federal uh, airhead. Part of this process is called end-of-life counseling, and part of the end-of-life counseling can be an end-of-life order. What does that mean, end-of-life? Another word for that is death, order. What's another word for that? A sentence. Now, bear, you folks review with me a little bit. As I recall... Stalin in 1920 issued about 20 million end of life orders for his fellow Russians. Pol Pot did it uh, during the Vietnam War. He ended, issued about 2 million end of life orders. Um, it's being done in Africa today. Mugabe is doing it every day. Adolf Hitler issued 6 million end of life orders. He called his program the final solution. I kind of wonder what we're going to call ours. That was an Americans for Prosperity event in Pueblo, Colorado. You wonder where these things come from about health care? This is a well-funded campaign going around the country, hosting speakers like this, telling people what they need to know, educating them about health reform. Americans for Prosperity has been on the front lines of the conservative movement's opposition to everything that's been done by President Obama. And while they build themselves as, quote, the nation's premier grassroots organization at their big Yay the U.S. Lost conference over the weekend, one of the weekend's featured speakers was a man named David Koch. Now, David Koch, it's K-O-C-H is the way you spell his last name. He's the ninth richest person in America, thanks to an oil and chemical empire called Koch Industries that he inherited from his dad. David Koch also happens to be the chairman of the nation's premier grassroots organization, Americans for Prosperity. He funded the group starting up. He continues to be one of their major funders. And this weekend, incredibly, in public, David Koch took a victory lap for his decision to form this supposedly grassroots organization, which now fights against all sorts of things that would be bad for big business. Five years ago, my brother Charles and I uh, provided the funds to start uh, the Americans for Prosperity. And uh, it's beyond my wildest dreams how AFP has grown into this enormous uh, organization. Days like today bring to reality the vision. 
vision of our board of directors. We envisioned a, a mass movement, a state-based one, but national in scope, of hundreds of thousands of American citizens from all walks of life, standing up and fighting for the economic freedoms that have made our nation the most prosperous society in history. Thousands of people from all walks of life marching proudly under the banner of massive funding from two brothers who inherited a big oil and chemical company from their dad. But Americans for Prosperity sort of looks grassroots. It takes great pains to try to look grassroots. And it uses that grassroots look to fight for economic freedoms, as he said. Economic freedoms for businesses like David Koch's Koch Industries. Koch Industries happens to be the largest privately owned energy company in the country. Their website boasts all about all of its companies that engage in uh, petroleum refining, uh, chemicals and base oil production, crude oil supply, and wholesale marketing of fuels, base oils, petrochemicals, asphalt, and other products. Given that connection, it may not surprise you as you are connecting the dots in your head right now. It may not surprise you to learn that in addition to opposing President Obama's efforts to bring the Olympics to the United States and opposing President Obama's efforts on health reform, Americans for Prosperity, chaired and funded in part by energy titan David Koch, is also against President Obama's climate change legislation. You can see their hot air tour, which is a giant hot air balloon which travels around the country. You guessed it educating people about the fallacy of global warming and the big dangers posed by the climate change bill. In addition to President Obama, weirdly, I feel like I have to mention this because it's weird if I don't, uh, it turns out they're also not fans of me um, either. According to Dave Weigel with the Washington Independent, who reported from the Americans for Prosperity conference this weekend, he said, quote, they booed loudly when MSNBC's Rachel Maddow appeared on screen in a clip where she promised Americans for Prosperity President Tim Phillips to be, quote, as fair as I can be. Joining us now is Dave Weigel. Dave, it's great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me again. What was I saying in the video clip when they booed me? You were asking questions of uh, Tim Phillips and pointing out where the funding came from, sort of like you just did right now. Um, there's a there's a bit of a discrepancy here. Americans for, for Prosperity does does not hide where the money comes from, but when these activists are told that the money is coming from oil companies, uh, when they the implication that their astroturf gets out there, they get very angry and uh, they don't they don't like you very much. I'm sorry to have to break it to you. Well, I don't. I'm not trying to make um, either important enemies or unimportant enemies, but I do recognize that. They've taken great pains sort of to, to try to convince people that they're not AstroTurf. They bring that up all the time. They, they've really tried to seem like they're not just a corporate-funded PR exercise. So that's why it strikes me as so strange that David Koch of Koch Industries took this victory lap, took credit for everything they've done. Did that seem weird in the room? It, it did, and his was the speech that probably got the least applause because he was sandwiched in between a bunch of uh, table-pounding politicians and professional speakers it it I, th I saw people looking at each other and, and, and wondering who he was. But it's important to note, David Koch has been funding libertarian and conservative causes for decades. He founded the Cato Institute. He has uh, sunk a lot of money into this. And five years, uh, years ago, uh, Citizens for a Sound Economy, later Americans Prosperity, existed. They just weren't this successful. So when he looks at this, this huge crowd out there, I think... He's uh, he he saw what it was like when he spent this money, and there were not people taking over the Capitol grounds, and there were not people interrupting town halls. I, I don't think it's surprising that he's he he wants to take credit for what happened. In, in terms of the image of the group and what they can take credit for and what they would be blamed for, um, do you know if there was any sort of self consciousness at the? at the conference about it being a little ugly or at least bad PR to be seen to be cheering and applauding the news that America lost um, our Olympics bid. There definitely was. That that message was not approved by everyone at AFP. Uh, Laura Ingram, who was the dinner speaker for the first night, m joked about it, w went on a long long rant, a rant about it, uh, chanted R.I.O. to celebrate the Brazil's victory. And I talked to um, Phil Kirpin, who's the policy director for AFP, and he, he was wincing. He just said, I don't like it when America loses. I don't think we should celebrate it when America loses. The more on message 
Olympic uh, speech, which uh, was when, was from Newt Gingrich, who led off the Saturday morning and said, "Look, I wanted America to get the Olympics. I love the Olympics." Uh, Newt, Newt Gingrich is a uh, you know was on, is on board with this kind of jingoism, but he used it to say President Obama can't close a deal, and he thinks his charisma is enough to patch over his bad policies. And that was a smarter framing that I think if you hear that coming over the next week, if there's real damage from this Olympic gloat, that's the message you'll hear them going back to. Particularly if they can back it up with some sort of some sort of credible uh, line of reasoning that the IOC voted no to Chicago because of Barack Obama's policies. But I suppose that'll be the fun fight to have if they actually pick up Newt's line of reasoning. Um, one last question for you, Dave. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that you wrote about today in Washington Independent is the, the extent to which these activists are being turned toward electoral aims. They're being turned toward the midterm elections in 2010. Are they explicitly identifying with the Republican Party? Do they see it as their job to elect more Republicans? 